<laughs> Welcome everyone, I hope that uh, all of you had uh, happy holidays. I wanted to release this video two days earlier, but I was quite uh, distracted. And when I say distracted, I mean I've been doing all sorts of contraproductive things in the holidays. So, so here we are, let's jump right into the video. Also no face cam today because painting a Santa hat on my avatar was much cheaper than buying one at the store, so you know how it goes. I am so broke that if I want to wear clothes I have to paint them digitally. <laughs> Last time I showed you the painting process of four Harry Potter fan arts that take place around the holidays and today I have two more for you. And unlike the previous ones, I didn't finish these last year and animated them now. I did both of them from scratch. Last time I painted four canon shapes from the Harry Potter fandom and uh, today I have two non-canon shapes that many people like nonetheless. One of them is Lavender Brown and Parvati Patil and the other one is Dean Thomas and Seamus Finnegan, all four of them Gryffindor students. And uh, you know how it goes in fandoms, uh, people just start shipping people who are good friends in the story and uh, you have all sorts of alternative universes where these people are romantically involved with each other. And I wanted to create two pieces in one of these fan created alternative universes. Now you see the sketches for both pictures, but I'm going to show them separately because I thought that it would be much more comprehensible. So last year's four pictures showed the couples spending their holidays separately, like every one of them had uh, their own little story and I wanted these two pictures to be, I wanted these two pictures to be connected to each other and tell a little story on their own. But first, let's talk about uh, this picture. Lavender Brown and Parvati Patil sleeping in their bed that is decorated with some Christmas lights that are flickering on the animation. Also, some of the early rays of sunshine uh, illuminate the room. One important detail is that Lavender has her scars that she got at the Battle of Hogwarts where she fought Fenrir Greyback and you know many fan artists started depicting her with these scars and I wanted to go with this trend. And yes, she died in the movie but in the novels her fate was not revealed so we can assume that she survived the attack. And that's when many fan creators, fan artists, fan fiction writers came and said that okay, she's alive and uh, we can continue her story in a way or another. There are two things that I wanted to do with the color palette. On one hand I wanted to create the Gryffindor colors, the red and the gold. These two are featured on their clothes. And also there are those pair of slippers by the bed that have the lion head which is the symbol of the Gryffindor house. And I also wanted to go with this pinkish, lavenderish, purplish color scheme for the whole room. This rather cozy and uh, kind looking color palette. One other important thing that like last time I didn't put like extra effort into making them look like the actresses who played them. I just wanted to create faces that look nice and uh, faces that are not painful to look at actually. And I would say that I made a pretty nice work this time. Actually painting people with closed eyes are way harder than I expected and uh, I've done it before and it went super bad and I was like okay it will be good. No, it is a disaster and I had to like look at a bunch of reference pictures to figure out how they should look and uh, I would say that I made it work most of the time but uh, not without uh, struggles, let's just say that. But overall I'm a little bit happier with this picture, maybe because it has like a much more spectacular perspective and uh, you know the characters are not just in a sitting pose and overall it's uh, interesting to look at a little bit more than the other one that we, you will see in a moment. But before I get uh, way too caught up in talking about this one, I wanted to mention one really important thing. These two pictures take place at the same day. Both of them take place in Lavender and Parvati's home. 
and the first one takes place before they wake up in the morning and on this day they are about to hold a little get together for their friends including Dean and Seamus and there is a little hint on the first picture there is this notebook on the bed still that says wake up at 10 a.m and guests arrive at 5 p.m and if you look at the clock the clock shows 9:53, which is seven minutes before they wake up and it will be important uh, later now comes the second picture so all four originals had one point perspective and then i switched to three point perspective when i started the lavender and parvati picture and then i went back to one point perspective with this one then i quickly realized that no that's not going to end up looking well i wanted to create one with a two point perspective for this one so you're not looking down at them like in the first picture so two point is much better and also i didn't really nail the three point perspective in the first picture so two point perspective to go i rotated the couch so they are not facing directly into the picture and now you can actually see the difference between the two pictures with the one point perspective and the two point perspective ones i think that it uh, is i say that it is really a big difference and it was really worth it it was really worth putting in that little effort to start it over and uh, turn it into a much better picture than uh, it could have been with the one point perspective as i said these two pictures are linked together and uh, this one takes place at the get together that lavender and parvati are holding right now and uh, one really negative thing about this picture that i kind of messed up by the end is that I added the reflections of the many people in the room to the window behind them and then unfortunately I failed to make them really recognizable so it almost looks like they are just sitting in a completely empty room while I really wanted to create this little detail well not even that little detail that they are actually in a living room that is filled with uh, many people but another little detail that i really like is their sweaters so i wanted to create these goofy christmas feathers one of them referencing uh, the star wars quote i am your father but instead it's uh, vader in a santa hat and saying i am your boyfriend which is like a little twist of the quote and the other picture is a xenomorph it's a chest burster is that what they call that with an alien egg that is painted like an easter egg and it's saying uh, um, easter because the little alien confused the uh, two holidays and uh, it's wearing a santa hat while also having a painted egg don't even ask how i got these ideas i just started scribbling around and uh, this is what i came up with on this picture there is a clock in the background that shows 507 because in the first picture you saw that there was the little note that said that the guests are going to arrive at 5 pm and this picture takes place seven minutes after they arrived like they just walked in they sat down that couch received those mugs filled with uh, i don't know some tea or something and uh, the way the first picture took place seven minutes before they wake up this one takes place seven minutes after the guests arrive oh and just uh, let's pause this picture here for a few seconds because i wanted to say something funny so when i was at this part i took like a few days long break and when i looked at this picture again my first instinct after like saying that oh these faces are turning out pretty great when I looked at them again, the first thing that I said that, okay, Seamus looks like he like really, really knows something and he's not going to tell you, like he's really up to something. And Dean, well, uh, let's just say that I don't want to go into any conclusions, but uh, Dean must have been listening to a lot of Snoop Dogg lately, so I thought that, okay, this race is really need to be fixed and... Uh, fixing them is what i did so moving on with the process as i said i fixed the faces and uh, i improved both of their bodies a lot 
I still struggle quite a bit with painting, uh, you know, characters and clothing in general. Like I always make them really stiff and artificial looking. And uh, maybe I'm just not seeing it right now, but it might really affect this picture as well. But I would say that even if they look uh, a little bit less convincing than uh, they could have, I am still uh, really happy how they turned out. And it's just, in the end, it's a cozy Christmas picture and I'm not going to be upset over uh, little things like this. I'm uh, planning to do a lot of clothing and uh, body studies in the near future. One detail that I wanted to mention is in Harry Potter there's always this little uh, design thing that they make uh, things a little crooked like pillars in buildings that are not straight, no pun intended, and like make uh, things a little less functional in order to make them more aesthetic in a goofy way and uh, that's what I wanted to do with the Christmas tree. So I painted it so so I painted it in a way that it is actually higher than the room itself and the top of the tree is bent because it's reaching the ceiling. And also the tree is standing in a giant pot because it's a living tree and uh, you know I'm not really a fan of dead Christmas trees and I really didn't want to make a picture of a dead tree. On the other picture that is in the Great Hall, it's not visible, but I like headcanon that, that that also is a living tree and it's going to be taken back into the forest once the holiday is over and uh, this is going to be having the same fate. So here we have the final versions of the two pictures. I added a little animation to both of them. They both feature flickering Christmas lights. And there's this uh, snowfall effect on the second one that took a little more effort. And now you can see the reflections in the window that are not that visible as they should be. But uh, honestly that is like the worst thing about the whole picture. And other than that I wanted to create two cozy and nice Harry Potter themed Christmas pictures. And uh, I'm confident to say that I succeeded. And uh, these two are nice additions to my series that now features six pictures in total. Here I'm going to like uh, show all of them. And uh, thank you very much if you watched through these two videos. I actually, if we count the painting process from last year when I made the basis for the first four pictures and then the animating this year and the two additional pictures from scratch, then this whole project, the whole six uh, painting series took me about from 100 to 120 hours in total. So it was a really long process even to my standards, but it just really worth it. Like every second of it, every little struggle with the many little things. I'm just happy that I have this collection of six fan arts and uh, call them a series and uh, I am more than thankful if somebody just looked at them to admire them for a few seconds and uh, I can't even say how thankful I am if you watched through these two videos. And a little personal thing in the end that if I remember correctly, on the 22nd I made a post on Instagram that I surpassed 100 followers and many people just said really really kind things and, uh, and some of them uh, started sharing this post and uh, some of my recent pictures including these uh, Christmas pictures and I was just, uh, I didn't even know what to say and I was super happy that there, there are these people who actually said that they liked my works because I always like look down on them very much and actually ever since then I gained nine more followers so I'm super happy for those as well. I just felt that I wanted to mention because it was like a small Christmas present for me and uh, you might say that, wait, that's not even a lot, what are you talking about, 100 followers, like, everyone has 100 followers everywhere, but just listen to me, I just, 
it's a really big number for me and uh, I know that many of those are not real like many of those are bots many of them like just uh, follow everyone they can but the fact that there are some people who who actually care for my works that is like uh, everything I could have ever asked for and uh, thank you very much everyone who was there and everyone who's watching this video right now and with that we reach the end and I say once again that I thank you very much if you watched it and I hope that you had happy holidays and if you didn't meet people you wanted during the holidays then I hope that you are going to meet them soon and I wish all of you the best and uh, as always have a nice day, do some art and have fun while doing that. Farewell.